Welcome to a moment of meditation. I am Patricia Lee, the assistant chaplain here at Friendship Village. We have been meditating on the meaning and significance of the resurrection, studying the 15th chapter of Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. We have arrived at the final victory, which is the death of death. But first, let us call to worship with this responsive reading. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the, For the Lord, Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great, great King over all the earth. earth. The Lord is King. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is girded with strength. He, he has, has established the world. It, it shall never be moved. The Bible passage today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 to the end. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. This passage follows what we explored last time on the nature of the resurrected body. Paul pointed out four characteristics of our resurrected bodies. Let's review them. Number one, the new body is imperishable, it will not die. Number two, the new body is raised in glory, it will be beautiful and perfect. Number three, the new body is raised in power, it will be strong and mighty. And then number four, the new body will be a spiritual body, not confined by the laws that govern physical matters. With that, with that in mind, Paul starts this section by making clear why our bodily resurrection is necessary. It is because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Now then, when and how will our bodies of flesh and blood, or our dead bodies of skeletons or ashes, turn into our new spiritual imperishable bodies? Paul tells us it is a mystery. He couldn't know for sure because it is a mystery to him too. But the Holy Spirit has inspired him to give us some basics. First, it will happen instantaneously, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Second, it will happen at the sounding of the last trumpet. Elsewhere in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Paul wrote, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. So this will happen when Christ himself returns from heaven. His appearance will be with pomp and power, with a shout, the shout for a mighty king, the loud cry of the archangel who will give notice of his approach. The glorious appearance of 
this great Redeemer will be ushered in by the trumpet of God. We can't begin to imagine the scene, but it will be awesome. Then third, the change happens. The perishable will put on the imperishable, and the mortal will put on immortality. Fourth and lastly, when this happens, that will be the death of death. Death is swallowed up in victory. There will be no more death. Verse 57 sums up for us how the victory over death is won. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. God gives us victory by sending us his son Jesus to be our savior. When Christ died on the cross, he became a curse for us, thereby redeeming us from the curse of death. When he arose from death, his victory over death becomes our victory. Praise and thanks be to God. Still Paul reminds us of our obligations. Verse 58, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. We need to hold firm to our faith in our God and live out our faith in good work. Our hope for our eternal destiny will give us joy and strength for today. Now let us sing this song together as we march forward towards Zion, the city of God.
himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept around, be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God be with you.